Okay, I was asked this uh, delightful question on, you know, getting obsessed with all kinds of things like uh, puzzles, you know, thinking about puzzles and, and getting puzzles or new puzzles or being obsessed with um, Halloween or with pumpkins and or, or whatever it is, you know, get, you know, getting obsessed with this and getting obsessed with that. And the person referred to 12 step groups, you know, you can be in a 12 step group for food and then you can work a 12 step program to release your addiction through spiritual connection. But then what if you're getting obsessed with puzzles or pumpkins? Should you join another uh, 12 step group? I think it's a great question. Now, I mean, in, in, in 12 step fellowships, they talk about release the addictions in the order they're killing you. So if you're taking cocaine and you're gonna die from, or alcohol, and you're gonna die within a month from that, that would be the first one. Uh, you might, you know, I always think of addictions like um, if you're an addict and you have got no spiritual connection to the divine, uh, in 12 steps they call it a uh, fit spiritual condition. Um, Hawkins might call it, you know, a level of consciousness that's above 540. Uh, uh, then uh, 12 steps, you know, when you do 12 steps, you admit you're powerless. Um, and then you do, uh, uh, you do 12 steps to get that strong spiritual connection to God. You know, or uh, that, I mean, Hawkins would say this is, you know, you need to, to overcome addiction, you must get at least to unconditional love, probably unconditional love around the area of the addiction. Otherwise, if you're in neediness, uh, you, I mean, the way I sort of see addictions is you have licenses, you know, the one that's killing you first, you must let go. Like if, for example, I'm a donut addict, food addict, then if that's killing me, and uh, you know, it's good to go to a 12 step fellowship for food and to work the steps and get a strong spiritual connection. So I start to feel that peace and love through my spiritual vibration to God, rather than feeling empty around donuts. Um, and then, you know, and then maintain that spiritual connection. Now, if I start to become, for example, you know, I've worked a 12 step fellowship around food and donuts, and then I suddenly become over time equally obsessed uh, around pumpkins or puzzles such that the obsession is quite significant and it, my life is deteriorating. I could, you know, one example is to, you know, uh, join uh, Puzzles Anonymous or Pumpkins Anonymous or uh, if they're available, or if not, just work the 12 steps around them. You know, uh, step one, um, powerless over being obsessed and, and going into puzzles and step two, and can you probably work those with a sponsor in a 12 step program? I'm sure most would be willing to help out. Um, or you can do the process yourself while working on the program and it should help. Um, the thing around, um, but I think that the, the main thing to see is what is the level of obsession and what is the level of disconnection? Now, if you're only having moderate obsessions uh, with uh, hardly any, insignificant, I would say, to impacting your recovery and your spiritual connection, your spiritual life, so that you might have a few days of being quite interested in puzzles and then it, do and it doesn't seem to do any harm. And then there's no, I wouldn't say there's any big problem in that. But if it is getting worse and deteriorating or becoming so obsessive that it's significant, then yeah, some kind of spiritual intervention and work either with uh, Hawkins or with 12 Steps or with A Course in Miracles, some dedicated spiritual action around it, you know, um, like with Hawk Canceling Beliefs, uh, you know, in, in effect, anything in the world, you know, as The Course in Miracles says, you know, the table is equally as meaningless as the light bulb, which is equally as meaningless as puzzles. I mean, I don't think there's many, too many uh, uh, table addicts in the world that get obsessed with different, I mean, there might be actually, but uh, what about labs? table lamps or light bulbs you probably will find one in seven billion people that's addicted to light bulbs <laughs> but uh, they probably start up something to to see it's meaningless in truth when something becomes meaningless it, god, god did not create meaningful puzzles so they're not real now the the spiritual phenomena to know with that is that um when something be, is rendered meaningless um, or the ego no longer identifies with or has past associations with it, it disappears from your consciousness. You know, for a donut addict, they would notice every donut in the world. For a handbag addict, they would notice every handbag, you know. But a handbag addict might not notice donuts around the world because they're meaningless. To a handbag addict, probably donuts are meaningless. 
to a donut addict, maybe Gucci handbags are meaningless. They wouldn't notice them throughout the day because their ego hasn't made it special. So there are mechanisms in the course of miracles to delete that. And then, you know, it becomes more of a flow. Whether you see a donut or not doesn't stop the holy instant. It doesn't stop that divine love and that divine presence in every moment. But of course, when the ego starts getting fascinated and very fascinated with um, puzzles or donuts or alcohol or whatever it is, or attachments to people, there, there becomes a significant, depending on the level of uh, obsession or meaning being projected from the ego, becomes an, uh, an impact on, on the spiritual vibration. So that was a lovely question. Thank you. And I'm going to...